Okay, y'all, we back. This is part three. The Rod of Moses. This is part three, the Rod of Moses. If you didn't see part one and two, you might want to go check those out. You in the middle of the movie. You ain't gonna really know what's going on. So go check that out. Part one and two, the Rod of Moses. This is part three. All right, uh, let's try to continue where we left off, man. I think we left off in Revelations, right? And uh, cars warming up. You hear, it's a, might be a little noisy, but I'm gonna turn it off in a minute. Y'all hear me much more clearly in just a minute. I'm just letting it get a little more heat in here. And let me find my uh, verse on my phone. Revelations, I think we left off. Revelations 2, 15. Revelations 2 and 15. Uh, it says, try to show y'all some of these verses. Uh, so has thou also, thou had, is that it? Yeah. Them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, uh, Nickelodeons, right? Tomato, tomato. And that's, uh, where they have these flesh and blood mediators giving uh, orders, instructions to the people. These flesh and blood mediators, that seek, man. Where they like pastors and bishops and what they call Catholic Church fathers and priests. And uh, that's those seats. Like Balaam and Balak, uh, they hired, hired servants, man, to deceive the children of Israel. Uh, Balak wanted to hire Balaam to curse Israel, right? So these mediators, man, outside of Jesus Christ, that's that seat. Mediators outside of Jesus Christ, all right? He says, repent or else I will come quickly and fight against thee with the sword of my mouth. The sword of my mouth. That's the rod in Moses' hand. You and me got this rod too. Just stay with me. I'm going to break it all down. We're going to take our time again. Uh, so we, I know we laid it out in part one, part two, but we're going to go a little bit deeper. Part three and four here. The sword of my mouth. The sword of the Lord's mouth. Uh, that's that's a, That same rod that was in Moses' hand. Uh, that's given to us. Let's go to Deuteronomy, man. I think chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, let's go there. I hope I'm right. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And uh, verse 10. Deuteronomy 6 and 10. Can y'all see that? And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sworn to thy fathers, right? To Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, right? Is that the one I want? Uh, let me go up. Let's go up a few more verses. That's tight, but let's go up a few more verses. Let's start with verse 6. Verse 6. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. These words, man. They got to be in your heart. Because these words are the rod. The rod of the Lord's mouth. He said, I will fight against thee with my mouth. So once these words, this is the covenant. This is the new covenant, which shows that the Bible is, is one. You know, the volume of the book, ain't no gaps. You know, everything Moses said, Jesus said. Right? For example, go up, let's go up a little further. All right? Let me turn this car off so y'all can hear me better. All right, let's go up a little further. This, this book is one. Ain't no gaps in it. 
You know, there was a 400 year of, of no profits. That's where they get their apocrypha. That shows us a counterfeit book. 400 years with no profit. Right? And that's where you get your apocrypha. Right? They talk about the Greek. Uh, the Greek rule. Right? Which show that's a counterfeit book. And uh, that's the Lord separating the wheat from the tares. You know? That's they, that's they food. That's they meat. The, the uh, counterfeit church. The counterfeit Israel. They eat from the apocrypha. They eat strange gods. They eat strange meat. They offer strange fire. We covered that in the last video. Uh, the blood atonement. If y'all didn't see that video, y'all need to check that out. Check that out. Let's see what... Uh, there's no gaps here. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 verse 3. Let's see. Moses said the same thing that Jesus would quote. Or well, Jesus would quote the same thing here that Moses is talking about. Verse 3 says, Hear therefore, O Israel. Remember Jesus said, Hear ye, O Israel. And I observe to do all that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Okay? That's the Holy Ghost, or the kingdom of God. Right? They were rehearsing this in the Old Testament. Now, verse 4, here it is. Hear, O Israel. This is Mark 12, 29 to 31. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Right? And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. This is the new covenant. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in the house. The scriptures. The Bible, man. This is, the, this is their inheritance. Our inheritance and their inheritance. This is the rod of God. This is the same rod that Moses had in his hand. We're going to tie it all together. These scriptures are the rod that Moses had in his hand. Man. We'll go to, well, what was our first verse? Exodus 4 verse 2. He said, what is that in thy hand? Moses said, a rod, a rod. These scriptures are supposed to be they're in your hand. This is your inheritance. That means that's in your hand. That's your possession. That same rod that was doing signs and wonders, every time Moses stretched it out, you know, this, these scriptures do the signs and wonders for you and me. The same rod that's in the Lord's mouth when the Lord said, I'm going to fight against you with the rod of my mouth. All right? Uh, this is all right. The scriptures are, are your rod and my rod. Right? Thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou rises up. Check this out. Verse 8. Thou shalt bind them for a sign. I like that word sign if you would. Because we got to go into that. Upon thy hand. Look at that. What did he say to Moses? What's that in your hand? These scriptures is in your hand. You are the chosen elect. You wield these swords like no other. Because you are ordained to do it. You are ordained to do it. These scriptures is written in your heart. And in your mind. That's the new covenant. Aaron's rod. That buddy, this makes you as Aaron's rod. This is Second Kings 19. Judah shall take root, take root, take Christ downward, bear fruit upward. This is the resurrection and the life of Jesus Christ. Being born again of these scriptures. The rod of God. And they shall be as frontless between your eyes, right? You keep this word, you meditate day and night. Ain't that what he told Joshua? To conquer Canaan, to conquer Canaan, you got to keep meditate day and night. Psalms one, chapter one, in the in the words of God, right? And these words become a rod, man. Remember Moses' staff? That was a stick. 
That was a stab. He laid it down. It became a rod. I mean, it became a serpent. It became a serpent. The Lord become a serpent, right? Didn't Moses have to make a brazen serpent? In uh, Numbers 21, represent a black man, exalted, that brazen serpent. And, and, and all those that were bitten by Satan, the other serpent, right? The left hand serpent, right? The counterfeit, the antichrist serpent, the poisonous serpent, the fruit of the poisonous serpent, all those that were bitten by him or it had to look to Jesus Christ, the brazen serpent that Moses lifted up, exalted. That's what it tells us in John 3, 13. Jesus got to be lifted up as Moses lifted up that serpent, exalted that serpent. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. You got to exalt him. High above every other name. Above every other God. Above every other authority. Jesus Christ got to be exalted. Right? And, and be frontless be, between your eyes. Right? That's your frontal lobe. Right? That's your, your mind gate. Right? In uh, Romans 7, Paul said, With the mind I serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Verse 9. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Do you got scriptures everywhere? Your front room, your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen. Write them scriptures down. That's how I got to where I am. Write them scriptures everywhere. That's what it's saying right here. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house. On thy gates. Right? This is your rod. This word changes. It transforms, man. It was a staff, a sign. That rod Moses had was a sign. Verse 8 says, Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. These scriptures is given to you into your hand for a covenant. The mighty words of God. This is a covenant, man. This is a covenant. This is the this is the sign of Jonah. All of that. Matthew 12, 39. Let's go there. Matthew 12, 39. I'm gonna go all over the place again. Y'all know how we do it, but we'll bring it back. We're gonna make it make sense. But for a minute, let me go all over the place again. Matthew 12. What'd I say? 39. Matthew 12, 39. Let's take our time, man. Eh? Matthew 12, 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There's that word sign again. That's what we want to deal with for a minute. Remember that staff in Moses' hand was for a sign. That was a sign. Right? Aaron's rod buddy. That was a sign. The Lord get, keep giving us many signs, man. And there shall no sign be given to it. Well, an evil generation, is that what that said? Let's back that up. Verse 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation. Ain't that what we living in right now? This is where we, this, that was prophecy for where we at now. You know? Even though it was that then, it was that in Noah's day, wasn't it? Huh? But we know it's at its full now. It's coming to its full. It's coming to its full now. We're at the end of their days now, man. They great come after us, and we great come after them. That's where we're going with this video. We great come after them. They're going to come after us first. And then the Lord going to flip it. We're going to come after them. Now, they think they're going to devour us. Remember when Moses laid them serpents down? We read that. I think it was Exodus 7. Right? He laid them serpents down. Exodus 7, verse 9 through 12. We read it. We read it in part 1. Y'all didn't see part 1. Y'all need to go back and check it out. Moses laid their serpents down. And then Pharaoh's magicians laid their serpents down. What happened? Moses' serpent, or Aaron's serpents, swallowed up Pharaoh's serpents' rods, man. They, they swallowed up the magician's rod. 
We show light rules over darkness. Good rules over evil. The righteous rule over the wicked. We going to become the predators. Moses and Aaron's sword uh, uh, rod became the predator. We going to become the predator. That's what the Lord said. When he come back, he going to fight the wicked with the sword of his mouth. We going to be the predators. They've been preying on us. They was oppressing us. Oh, you know. We were, they were devouring us. Took us captive. Did to us as they would, as they willed. Laid our, our soul and our body on the ground. Told us to bow down. And then we walked over our souls, right? And our bodies as the, as the mire in the street. Degraded us. But they did unspeakable stuff to us, man. The half is not told. But the Lord, Lord got record of it. So that's why I said vengeance is the Lord. The Lord's coming back to take vengeance on what they did to his heritage. They destroyed the Lord's heritage, man. We the people. Israel, 12 tribes. One nation. Right? And the Lord's coming back to avenge his people. Avenge Zion, man. Because they stormed Zion, ancient Zion, in the earth. They was never supposed to go into that city. Lamentations 1.10. They were never supposed to go there. Heathen wasn't supposed to enter into our, our sanctuaries. And they defiled it. They defiled the Lord's name. Ezekiel 35. Lord's coming back for the controversy of Zion. They attacked stormed and tore down the Lord's city, man. Where the Lord dwelt. His name was there. His name was on his people. They furthered our affliction and showed no mercy. No mercy. All right. And that's where the bulk of their judgment's coming from because they had no mercy. That's James 2.13. If y'all think I'm tripping, read it. But that's another video I want to go in there. But that's in the future. But let's keep this go. Let's keep this road. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. They want a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, three days, three nights, in the heart of the earth. Okay? The sign of Jonah, man. He, he gives us signs. He done gave us, he done told us many a times of, of the signs to look out for, to watch out for. Remember that rod was a sign. Uh, uh, Let's get this one in uh, Isaiah 7, 14. Definitely want to do this. Isaiah 7, 14. Because he said this would be a sign. Right? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. S-I-G-N. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. And we know what a virgin is. Us that have a sound mind. Come on. And bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Right? So this virgin, and we you know we get that fulfillment of that prophecy and Matthew, right? Matthew uh one what is it, twenty one? Let's go there. New Testament. Matthew one, twenty three, Matthew one and uh twenty three. Let's read it. Can y'all see it? Behold a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son that's what we just read and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted that what we just read the prophecy God with us that's the interpretation right that's verse 23 
at verse 21. Let's go up two verses. And she shall bring forth this virgin. She shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. The Bible, the Bible is the final authority, right? Now, this is without controversy. It's not the Bible the final authority. That's why I said, let all men be liars, let God be true. This is without controversy. The Bible is the final authority. She, for he shall save his people from their sins. Right? Now, this was done that it might be fulfilled with what was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, by the scriptures. The prophets wrote the Old Testament. Right? Saying, Behold, we just read it. Isaiah 7, 14. A virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son. This is the sign. And they shall call his name. This is the sign of Jonah. That's, that's the sign of Jonah. We read. And, uh, uh, the sign of Jonah, man. And, uh, where I want to go now. Uh, I hope y'all getting some light, some understanding. Uh, that rod, I want to deal with that. That whole time, that rod was nothing but the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, that same ride, let's go to, uh, uh, Lamentations 2. Lamenta yeah, let's go to Lamentations. Lamentations, chapter 2. Let's start with verse 1. Let's start with verse 1. This is for understanding. How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion? That's his house, right? And Jesus come from Zion with a cloud. This is Zion in the earth. This is the earthly Zion. Right? Which had to become a house of sacrifice. Because we was of the flesh. We were captive by the flesh. We were imprisoned by our own flesh. Our own flesh and blood. Through Adam and Eve, right? With a cloud in his anger and has cast down from heaven. Look at this. Cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel that was removed from us. Our crown was removed from us. Our glory was removed from us. God became an enemy to his own people because we became an enemy to him. And remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. He was angry. Verse 2, the Lord has swallowed up the habitations of Jacob and had not pitied. He had thrown down in his wrath the stronghold of the daughter of Judah. Didn't Jesus come from Judah? Well, he kicking Judah ass right here. Judah of the flesh. Gentile Judah. Right? Sinner Judah. Corrupt nature Judah. Right? Transgressor Judah. Judah, Jacob, the worm. The worm. Right? This was before he walked as a man. This Judah here was before Judah came into the earth. Right? The scepter. The scepter is the rod. He said Judah would carry that rod, the scepter, right? In Genesis 49. Keep that in, man. He had brought them down to the ground. He had polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. He cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel all the parent might that we had in our hand in the flesh man that we trusted the works in our own hand that's what he's doing right here the self confidence that we had that's that's what made us leave the Lord depart from the Lord we trusted in our own beauty we had our own self righteousness which was filthy rags we thought it was something we thought we was doing something we thought we were somebody without the Lord. We thought we could stand without the Lord. We was like, Lord, we got this. We put the Lord on the back burner. Just give us a king. Just give us somebody, Lord, and we got this. You don't have to do nothing, Lord. Right? And the Lord said, okay, I'm going to give you what you want. 
And he gave us what I want. He gave us king. How'd that work out for us? It didn't work out right. Why? We ain't had no mind. We didn't know what the hell we were. That we can't do it on our own. God wants us to have something higher, man. The Bible said, I had not seen, ear had not heard, neither had entered into the heart of man the things that God had prepared for them that love him. He had a plan to crown us with a with a crown that cannot fade away, man. His life. He's trying to take us to higher ground. Something that's not of us. We now you have to trust and have faith for this. You're gonna have to trust and have faith for this. This this don't come by men, corner men. This is something that's not created that he's trying to give us. So we had to destroy all this of the flesh. So Israel of the earth. That's why we are the daughter of Zion. We're the daughter of Zion now. We come out of this. We come out of this furnace of fire, man. He had to set this on fire. This house, his own house. He had to tear it down and rebuild it through Christ, the Holy Ghost. He had thrown back his right hand. Look at that. He had drawn back his right hand. That's his rod. Jesus Christ is the rod. Before the enemy. And he burned against Jake. We're going to see in a minute. Just a second. I'm showing you right here that Jesus Christ is the rod. The rod of God. God did all this by his, by his right hand. Jesus Christ is the right hand. That's what it means by Isaiah 53, 1. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He has to reveal himself. You know, last part of the video, we were talking about uh, Joseph. How Joseph was unknown to his brothers. He was yet alive, but... In, his brothers that thought he was dead, dead and gone. They thought they'd never see uh, uh, Joseph again. But Joseph had resurrected uh, a new man in a new image. He was in a new image, man, reigning with power and glory. Joseph represents the life of Jesus Christ, how he would be to us. When you look at Joseph, and the relationship he had with his brothers before and after, that's our relationship with Jesus Christ. He has to reveal himself to us. And he does this by what? Our faithfulness. Jo jo Joseph's brothers showed themselves faithful. They were tested. Joseph kept giving them tests. And they passed their tests. He gave them too much money, they brought that money back. They gave him the golden cup and all that. He put the golden cup in there. And uh, Benjamin, that's where you got uh, Benjamin means the son of my right hand. So they faithfully went and got their brother Benjamin. They, they went and got him. You know, that broke Jacob's heart. You know, the, the, to release the young son. But, you know... But uh, even before that, let's go, let's deal with Rachel, who gave birth to Benjamin. She named him ben and I. She gave him an accursed name. It was Jacob that changed his name to Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. And Rachel got, had hard labor. I'm talking about Joseph's mother. Joseph and Benjamin's mother, she gave birth to Benjamin. That's when she died. Hard labor. Which shows that's how we bring forth Christ. That's how we bring forth Benjamin. The son of our right hand. We got to give hard labor, man. We travail to bring forth Christ Jesus. Rachel represents us, you and me. Right? And But she had to die to bring forth Benjamin. The son of my right hand. Son of my right hand. Hard labor. Yeah, and uh, that's another video where we can go deeper into that. But let's keep reading. Uh, he had bent his bow like an enemy. He became an enemy to his to Zion, to Judah, his own people. He he's using a rod, man, his right hand. He stood with his right hand. Look, as an adversary, 
and he slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. See that? That's his right hand. That's Jesus Christ. It's just one God. Ah, oh, man. Let's go to uh, let's go to Exodus. This your eyes gonna some of y'all scales gonna fall from somebody's eyes on this one. Let's go to Exodus 15, verse 1. Let's start with verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he had thrown in the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. That's Acts 4, 12, Jesus Christ. Neither is salvation any other. No other name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved, right? Jesus Christ. Right? God do different things, different manifestations. He's a rock. Right? The water that can't flow. He Jesus is called that rock. Right? The staff in Moses' hand, that rod. Right? The 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 uh, angel in the burning bush that Moses was talking to, that was the Lord. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. That's what we're supposed to be doing now. In your spirit. Soul and body. Preparing his habitation for him. Sanctifying your spirit, soul, and body through the scriptures. The, the scriptures is the covenant. The everlasting covenant. The rod of God. We're going to see that in a minute too. If I, if I ever get to it. My father's God, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's our forefathers. Our ancestors. This is ancestry. This book is for ancestors. The, the, the uh, uh, children of the, our ancestors. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you're not of that stock, you don't come out of Jacob. This ain't for you. And I will exalt him through name Jesus Christ. Through the name Jesus Christ. The Lord is a man of war. Look at that. A man of war. The Lord is his name. Right? Pharaoh's chariots and his host he had cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom of the, as a stone. Check out verse 6. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, had dashed in pieces the enemy. Thy right hand. Thy right hand. That's Jesus Christ. So he destroyed Egypt and Pharaoh with his right hand. We just read in Lamentations. He destroyed the city, his own people, with his right hand. He destroyed Judah, the daughter of Zion, with his right hand. Same thing he did with Egypt. With his right hand. Now his right hand comes in the flesh. We call him Jesus Christ. Let's get that. Uh, the victory comes through his right hand. Let's get Psalms 98. Psalms 98. Oh, I'm in Proverbs. My fault. Uh, Psalms 98, verse 1. Psalms 98, verse 1. Hope y'all can see it. Oh, sing uh, unto the Lord a new song. He had done marvelous things. Was it Moses then was talking about this? Wasn't they singing this? His right hand and his holy arm had gotten him the victory. See that right hand? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Right? His right hand. That's Jesus. Where's Jesus right now? Where's his position? When Stephen was being stoned, Stephen... He looked up and saw Jesus where? That's the authority and power of God. That's what he saw. He saw God in the flesh. That's what Stephen saw. God in the flesh. Jesus Christ. At the right hand and in the position of God. Right? The rod of God. This is the rod of God. It's only him. He destroys with his mouth... And he builds with his mouth. He created. He said, let there be. He created with his mouth. 
He said, I'm going to come back and destroy it with my mouth. We read that. Revelation 2, what? 15? His holy, his holy arm and had gotten him the victory, right? His right hand and his holy arm had gotten him the victory. The Lord had made known his salvation. Jesus Christ, right? Acts 4, 10 through 12. His righteousness he had openly showed in the sight of the heathen. His righteousness he openly showed right in the sight of the heathen he had remembered his mercy ain't that what calvary is ain't that what the cross is the heathen even tried to claim his mercy and his truth ain't that what the bible's called truth didn't jesus come with grace and truth and mercy toward who the house of israel all the ends of the earth all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. Don't they? Don't like Great Lion said. Don't the whole world be talking about this? Huh? B.C. and A.D. Man, Christ, Christ Jesus. Like I said, uh, Moses Rob became a servant. Let's go to Exodus four. 22. Exodus 4 22. Let's show you something. See what? We all over the place, man, but we still getting something out of it, right? We all over the place, but we getting something out of it. Uh, Exodus 4 22. Let's start there. Hope y'all can see it. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Right? And that's through Christ. We become the firstborn through Jesus Christ, man. Firstborn from the dead, man. Resurrected from the dead. Verse 23. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn, Egypt, the flesh. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Right, and so forth. That's Moses' wife took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, "Surely, a bloody husband thou art." So Moses was called a bloody husband. Moses was called a bloody husband. Who else was called a bloody a bloody man? Second Samuel sixteen, verse five. Second Samuel. 16 verse 5 it's gonna come together I know I'm all over the place it's gonna come together though second Samuel 16 5 and when King David came to Berhurim behold thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul whose name was Shimei the son of Gera he came forth and cursed still as he came and he cast stones I like that word stones we're gonna go into that he cast stones at David King David you cast stone David was anointed David was anointed but this man Shimei had cast stones at David and at all his servants of King David he cast stones at David and David's servants and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Right? He was casting stones at them that were at David's right hand and left hand. And thus says Shimei, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man. So he's calling David a bloody man. Moses is called a bloody man by his own wife. And Shimei of the house of Saul, he's calling King David a bloody man. But wasn't King David a man after God's heart? All right, let's keep going. And thou man of Belial, he called David the man of the devil. Man of the devil. Now this is what this righteous judgment, that's what the word is, the rod, the covenant. The everlasting covenant is righteous judgment. But this man is casting stones. Is he using righteous judgment? I don't think so. Look what he said. The Lord had returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. 
in whose stead thou hast reigned. Ain't people falsely accuse you of doing things and saying things? Well, they, that's what Shimei is doing with David. He's falsely accusing this man. Right? And we know about Saul. Saul was tripping. Saul was not a man after God's heart. God stripped the kingdom from Saul. Saul was wilding out, looking for praises of men and not the praises of God. You know? God re Saul rejected the word of God. The Lord said he would choose one better than Saul. You know? He said David was a man after his own heart. But Sh Shimei is, is, is wilding out here. He's throwing stones. He's saying David, King David is the son of the devil. You know? Let's finish this. And the Lord had delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And the Lord didn't choose Absalom. Absalom was self-appointed. He decided he was going to be king over his daddy. He, he pulled a mutiny. Even Israel anointed Absalom king. David was still alive. David had a lot of life still left in him at this time. Y'all see what things we go through in salvation? You got a left hand side that wants to dethrone you. They uh, uh, point somebody who, who who God didn't even look at. God don't even acknowledge. They'll appoint somebody over you. They will try their best not to acknowledge you. These are haters, y'all. Throwing stones, man. That they have no right to throw. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief because thou art a bloody man. He's calling David a bloody man. He's justifying wrongdoing, man. He was accusing David. Remember that Job's friend was doing that to Job. Uh, then said Abishai, the son of Zariah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. One of David's men want to take this dude's head off. He's Knowing he's tripped. Knowing Shimei is tripping. And the king said, what have I to do with you, sons of Zariah? So let him curse, because the Lord had said unto him, Curse David, who shall, shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? At that time, David, David was depressed, man. David felt like the Lord had put him to do that. David was discouraged at this time. You know? Which showed that you might go through some discouragement at times but you got to eventually encourage yourself in the Lord David was a wise man he eventually picked himself up man he got down at times you know this was judgment of David because of the Bathsheba thing the Lord said a sword should not leave thy house so David had many trials man many many evils that he had to endure for that sin of but Sheba, that lust, and had her husband killed. You know? And that sword never left David's house. You know? So David's drinking that cup, man. David's drinking that cup of God's judgment, man. But he never left the Lord. He held on, man. Even though he knew the Lord was chas chasing, chasing him. The Lord was chasing him. David didn't let go, man. David knew he had to drink that cup. You know? He had to lay in that bed that he made. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seek of my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord had bidden him. You know? It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And David and his men went by the way. Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. Shimei kept going and throwing stones. Why you go there, King Superman? Why'd you what's the whole point of that? 
let's go to the new test sometimes teaching takes time man takes time to get you your point across sometimes you got to go a long way you know why did i go there uh john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and it says uh and jesus went into the mount of olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them and the scribes and pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they say unto him master this woman was taken in adultery in the very act now moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned such should be stoned now in the bible with the children of israel keep this in mind stoning is a righteous act okay when you have wisdom knowledge and understanding okay when you uh, 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 in the covenant of God stoning is a righteous act if we got time I'm going to go into that we're going to go into it now what Shimei was doing he was out of order he was out of order we're going to show you just a second Jesus came to bring the right order right because you got to have righteousness you got to be in the will of God. You got to be in covenant. Right? You got to judge righteous judgment, which Shimei did not have. He was exalting Absalom. Absalom was way out of order. Calling David a bloody man. God said, David's a man out of my own heart. God was chastening David his way. You know? And Shimei just butting in, not minding his own business. Just want to wild out. Just want to get in on the action, man. You know, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him. They was tempting Jesus that they might have to accuse him. They didn't want to accuse Jesus. So again, we gonna go through stuff, y'all. People gonna accuse you. They want to set you up. Falsely accuse you like Shimei did, David. Over, uh, dethrone you like Absalom was trying to do with King David, his daddy. Because this this position where the Lord is taking you hey man that's beyond words man it's worth the junk that you gotta go through and you gotta earn it this is how you gonna deal with these situations these issues that pop up how you gonna deal with it because Joseph was falsely accused of rape and went to prison for a couple years he could have turned bitter against God he could have turned bitter I'm sitting up here in prison I ain't even do nothing why am I in prison? I'm done with God. God ain't with me. But the Bible said God was with Joseph the whole time. That was part of the that was part of uh, the testing. He endured patience, long suffering. That was part of the process to get him to the throne. Joseph became king of Egypt, man. Wasn't nobody higher than him that but, but the Pharaoh. Because he was tested, he endured. And he didn't turn bitter against his God, man. Right? He was persecuted for righteousness sake. Joseph. Because he stood his ground. He didn't commit adultery with that woman. He ran from that woman. That woman lied on him. Said he tried to rape her. See, when you hold your ground in righteousness, the Bible says it's better to suffer for righteousness sake then for evil doing suffer for righteousness sake hold your ground if you in the right david held his ground and and everything became okay the absalom got killed the lord removed absalom david didn't put his hand to absalom david could have killed absalom david accepted god's judgment man david accepted the judgment, because David knew he messed up with Bathsheba, and God put that sword on him. And, and uh, uh, his sons, Absalom, tried to take the throne, and Adonijah, his other son, at another time, tried to take the throne. Adonijah. So some things you're going through, man, you got to understand, get some wisdom, understanding to where you at. Why is this going on? And understand 
you're just being tested. You best be in touch. And you better not turn bitter against the Lord your God. Job didn't turn bitter. Job was hit. Y'all know the patience of Job. What the Bible talks about the patience of Job. He didn't turn bitter against God. He endured, man. And he kept his head lifted up high. He said, Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He kept his eye on God. I know my Redeemer liveth. He shall stand in the latter day. He had my flesh, though my skin were to eat my, my body yet, in my flesh shall I see God. He knew he was going to be resurrected. He, he knew he was going to see the Lord. He had a ransom for his soul. He held on to that. And whatever else happens, let it happen. But hold on to the faith. Paul said, I kept the faith. Anyway, but Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as if he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and he said unto them, here's the words in red, here's what we want. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone. He that is without sin. Those are the ones that get to cast the stones. Shimei, Shimei was not righteous. He was not righteous. Remember, stoning is a righteous act. Stoning, let me say it again, is a righteous act. Let me give y'all some examples of that. I know I'm all over the place, but I got to give some examples. Deuteronomy, what we want, 22, 18. I got to give you some examples. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 22 uh, and uh, what we want I know it's Deuteronomy 22 though y'all give me uh, Deuteronomy 22 or is it 21 Let's try 21, 18. Deuteronomy 21, 18. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Deuteronomy 21. That's what we want, y'all. Sorry about that. Deuteronomy 21, 18. If a man... So we might have to go to the other parts, man. It might be part 5 and 6. If a man have a stubborn, rebellious son, which will not obey his voice, here we, yeah, this is what we want. Check this out. A stubborn, rebellious son that will not obey uh, the voice of his father or the voice of his mother. And this is, uh, you know, our heavenly father and the mother land. You know, the land, the mother is, is the Sabbath. Ah, that's another video. And that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold of him, and bring him out to the elders of the city, and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This our son is stubborn, rebellious, he will not obey our voice, he is a glutton and a drunk. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones. See that? Stoning was a righteous act with the children of Israel. It was to get rid of wickedness from among our people. That he shall die. So shall thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. That's how we got rid of wickedness. With stoning. Today, you have to...